everyone, my name is Charlie and I have 100% success rate of winning PIP. That's whether it's claims, mandatory reconsiderations, which is the posh word for appeal, um, reviews, and I've only done one tribunal, but we won. Okay, so 100% success rate. I also suffer from chronic illness myself. Am I recording? Yeah. I'm great with PIP, crap with technology. Because <laughs> I suffer from chronic illness, I have a severe form of arthritis, so I'm in varying levels of pain 24 seven, and I suffer from chronic fatigue. And when I say chronic fatigue, I'm in the type of fatigue where my body can shut down and I can sleep for 36 hours. Like right now, I'm struggling to hold my head up, but this is, this is really important. My channel is getting more and more views and every day I'm getting emails from people desperate for help, okay? And what is clear is, uh, uh, well, the whole process sucks. I think we can agree it sucks. But what's clear is y there's no training. So today, this is critical. This is so important. I would not win PIP claims if I didn't go through this information. It's the behind the scenes PIP scoring points. This is not a secret. The government don't keep it a secret. Admittedly, they don't like promote it. But everything you do has to be about these points. I'm going to go through them with you. I'm going to give you examples. And I am going to be brutally honest with you. By the way, I'm sorry about the background. Um, I've, I'm losing my home. You know, I've lost my job. I'm losing my home. So it's, I mean, it's a bit, bit of going through change. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. But I've discovered that actually a couple of things. One, you don't care what I look like. The fact that I've got dirty hair and stuff, you don't care because you understand because you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't suffer from chronic illness or if you didn't have a loved one that suffered from chronic illness. So I really am grateful to those of you that just accept me for how I am. And also I've discovered that you don't care what the background's like so long as I've got, I'm providing you with value. Hence why we are now recording this guide. So I'm gonna show you the points. Obviously, if you can, brilliant, no points. Now you see here where it says, do you use an aid or an appliance to be able to wash and dress? If when you're getting out of the bath or into the shower, you're holding on to something. It doesn't need to be a posh handle. It's if you're doing holding on to anything to get yourself in or out, that's an aid. That's you using something. And you need to clarify that you could, if you're doing that. Have you joined us for the meeting? Yeah. We're talking about Pip again. Yeah, we are. It's really important. Yes, it is. Yes, right. So if you're, if you're doing that, if you're using something to help you get in and out of the bath or the shower, sorry, sorry, um, you're using an aid. Um, my mind has gone blank, but you know what I mean. I've just, I've just been walking a bit. Holly. And I think potentially my trainee assistant's dog is telling me that I need to stop. Do I need to stop for a bit? <sighs> Let me have a think. Do I need to stop? I think I probably need to stop. I really want to get this recorded, but yeah, sweetheart, I think you're right. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. I will be back soon. Okay, I've taken, had a rest. Taking more pain meds, gonna give it another go. I think it's taken, like, we're not even, I think I'm halfway through this and it's taken me about four or five different recording days. Um, I think, cause, because Pip's such a head fuck, isn't it? Like, when I'm explaining it, it's just tiring, you know, going through, trying to think of everything, trying to get as much information across as possible. But it's an honor to be able to do this. It's an honor to be able to um, work with people. Right, so that's the AIDS. Um, so I expect everyone that is suffering um, from a chronic illness that results in varying levels of pain 24 seven and fatigue, everyone should be using some sort of aid. You, you are, even if you don't realize it, and I'm hoping you realize it now. Prompting, if you've, if you've, w you've gone all the way through with me and you're on to four, um, you'll, prompting's a lot in PIP. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's get honest. Let's, let's, let's get real with each other. Right. We live in a first world country. I don't look, if my terminology is not right, sorry, but you get what I mean. We live in a first world country. Um, in our 
country and our culture, it is normal for us um, to shower or bathe daily. Sometimes twice a day if you're fit enough and you're going to the gym, things like that. Or you just, that's your routine. So when we become chronically ill, or this is, this is definitely my experience and through talking to everyone. No, not everyone. Let's say 80% of the people I've worked with, there's this guilt, there's this embarrassment that we're not bathing or showering daily. And I'm frustrated about it because my friends in Africa are certainly not bathing and showering every day. Because water is like gold in some places. You don't waste it like what we do in the UK. So I have, I actually managed to have a bath quite recently, but normally I don't. Normally I wash my hair at the kitchen sink. Um, I, and I wash with the flannel at the sink, armpits and groin. That's it. Obviously I wash my hands after I've been to the toilet so my hands clean. My feet, like when Pip questioned me about my feet, I was like, what, what do you think is happening with my feet? And they were like, well, how do you clean your feet? And I'm like, well, I, I don't, I don't. They're in bed socks. They're in bed socks or they're in socks. You know, so what, I was like, I don't understand what you think is happening to my feet. Every now and again, my mum will get the uh, bucket, I'll put my feet in it, soak them. But it's hard to do feet. They're far away. It is difficult when they question you and like, how do you clean your back? And I'm like, I, I don't. I'm not having someone come and wash my back for me. And again, I was like, it's not like I'm rolling around in a mud pit. What do you think is happening to my back? I'm cleaning my key areas. I do not smell. I am maintaining my personal hygiene. And my friends in Bangladesh and multiple countries in Africa, they're not sweating it. Like, um, Ruth, her family, whole family, they get a bucket of water with this much water in it. And the whole family has to wash from that one bucket because water is scarce. So my request, and I, I do feel very passionate about this because the guilt I felt for over a decade about my personal hygiene, and I, once I sort of reminded myself of, hang on a minute, my friends in Africa, oh, we're privileged, we're in the UK, oh, it's our culture, hang on a minute. Like, the majority of the world isn't showering and bathing daily. They're not. So we don't have to feel guilty about this. We do not smell, we are maintaining our personal hygiene, that's what's important. And having a bath and a shower is high risk and absolutely exhausting. So don't worry if you're not having them. Just be blunt in Pip, just be blunt. So I've got the, I've got the points in front of me as well, so that's what I'm looking down. Right, hopped on about that now. I feel very passionate about it. So this prompting, I find, well, I tend to say to people, if they're living with someone else and say like, is your partner nagging you? Does your partner nag you? Oh. Ready? Move. Come on. Um, and they're like, yeah. For me, um, my mum and I are currently living together and she was my carer for uh, over a year. My mum nags me constantly about bath because in her head, you bath every day. And because I don't look sick, even though she's my mum and she knows that I'm chronically ill, but I don't look it. So she nags me about a bath. Do you need to have a bath? You need to have a bath. When did you last have a bath? Don't you need to have a bath? Do you, think, do you think you should have a bath? And I'm like, do I smell? Well, no, but you haven't had one for a long time. No, you're right, I haven't. Because she doesn't understand fatigue, chronic fatigue. She doesn't understand why having a bath exhausts me. When I was bedridden, she'd nag and nag and nag and nag. And eventually I'd just give in just to shut her up. I'd get in the bath and she's like, you feel better? No, I didn't feel better. I felt a million times worse because I was even more exhausted because I'd gone through all the trauma of having a bath. It didn't, I didn't feel good. Like I nearly fell over like four times, absolutely exhausted and then I'm extra, extra sick for days afterwards. No, I didn't feel better. But when you're able-bodied and you have a bath, you feel lovely and clean and refreshed. And don't get me wrong, it's nice having a bath. Not when I'm in survival mode, and now I just refuse. Nope, nope, because I've built my confidence. But if you've got a family member that is prompting you 
I've got two points here, right? If they're, if they're prompting you, nagging you, like suggesting it, make sure you record it in your PIP claim. Or mandatory reconsideration, or tribunal, whatever part of PIP stage you're at, you've got to record it. But I don't want you to be worn down by those people. Do not be pressurised to have a bath or a shower when you are not ready, because the aftermath isn't worth it. We can maintain our personal hygiene without having a shower and a bath. Um, and I feel like, comment below if it's not just me that's been guilted into it and then you get extra, extra sick because you feel worn down that you've got to conform to society. Right, you know, because I firmly believe we don't have to. Right, so needs assistance to be able to wash either the hair or body below the waist. So this hair is a big one. Um, a lot of people I work with, I don't know if you can hear my mum's dog, she's, there's a tree and she's having the time of her life. So hair, so so for example, you struggle with your hair, like struggle to brush it, struggle to wash it, you just need to simply say, I have, uh, I would, for example, this is your example, my partner washes my hair for me because of the, uh, because my, of my right shoulder, and then whatever condition it is that impacts that right shoulder. Um, that's it, keep it that simple. Right, keep it that simple. Or body below the waist. I think, look, I think most of us are in the same situation as me, that if I can't get to my feet, I'm not getting someone in to wash my feet. I'm just not. So I think we're all in a situation where if we are able to get in the shower or the bath, we just let the water go over it. And if we can wash them, then brilliant. If not, we're not that worried about it. But you can clarify that, obviously. So needs assistance to get in and out of the bath or shower. Again, really important. So for example, you... I think when I talk to a lot of people, it's our prominent... Uh, like, I'm right-handed, so it's my right side that's more affected by the arthritis, psoriatic arthritis. And when I'm talking to people, there tends to be a side that's worse, right? So always be clear on which side is worse. So some people, it's, oh, it's getting my right leg in the bath. Okay. Oh, it's my left leg in the bath. Okay. So it, it has to be lifted in. Okay. Just pop, put that down. So uh, for example, it would be when I get into the bath, my friend lifts my uh, right leg into the bath for me in and out of the bath in and out don't forget getting out so needs assistance to be able to wash their body between the shoulders and waist obviously that's pretty clear um this one is for pretty much cannot wash and bathe at all is for people that are terminal Ill. this is for people that are bedridden that need bed baths or to be um, assisted with standing getting into the bath and it are dependent on carers i hope that you you're looking at this and you're thinking, hang on a minute, Charlie. I I have to hold on to a handle to get in and out of the bath. I get nagged by my partner. I can't wash my hair. And then sometimes I get stuck in the bath. Right. If you, say for example, sometimes you get stuck in the bath, you either run out of energy or whatever your condition is, you need to put in there, for example, twice no, um, once a week, um, I will get stuck in the bath. So, so and so will have to help me get out, or I get stuck in the shower. And when for the stuck bit, so it could be due to chronic fatigue. I have to wait until I've got the energy to move. It could be um, due to pain. My pain is so severe I cannot move. Um, whatever the reason is, put it in there and try and give an example of how often that happens. And I try and do weekly. So yeah, so my point was, before I got distracted by that example, I use a handle, I get nagged, I can't wash my hair, I get stuck in the bath, so that's two, four, six, nine points, just on washing and bathing. Pip aren't going to give you nine points, they won't, because it's Pip. So. I do find a lot of time there, especially when I'm helping people with review forms. I've got a link below to my consultancy stuff, but before you even look at that, I'm trying to put everything I can on YouTube for free, right? I, we don't have enough money to pay for help with PIP. I am available, but I would much rather you try and do it for free, okay? What seems to be the most popular is when people are doing reviews and that people don't, and that people, sorry, and people don't understand that 
how many points they're entitled to. So when I'm sort of going through them, or I've just been I've just been worn down by this lovely code name, the politician. Oh. Um, he wore me down, right? So we're going to do the full pip together. And he's been given zero points before, appealed zero points, or pretty much zero points, like whatever it was, wasn't worth it. So when I was talking to him and going through it, in the first two questions, he had 16 points. And it blew his mind. And I'm like, but they're not going to give you that. They'll probably give you four. That's just what Pip do. That's what Pip do. Even when we went to tribunal, and it should have been like, she should have got, Wendy should be on like 50 plus points. She got 12. They never give the right points. And I know I go on and on and on about this, but they never give the right points. And when I'm working with the politician, um, or oh, his code name should be future politician, um, he, I have to explain that even though on your score, and I don't bother adding it up when I work with people because I'm like, you're well over, you are going to get enhanced. But I have to say to them, if they're starting the claim, they're never going to give you the right points. They're going to give you just under, they'll probably give you 10 or 11. You have to do the mandatory appeal, but it's easy. It's so easy compared to the going through the PIP 44 page form, the claim form, then the assessment, doing a mandatory reconsideration, their posh name in for an appeal, so easy. So don't give up, don't give up. They're never gonna give you the right points. You have to give yourself that inner conversation. Or just look, right, just listen to me, okay? Again, on YouTube, you're not supposed to tell people what to do, but I, I, I'm going to, right? If you're going through this point scoring system going, yeah, Charlie, that's me. Yeah, I get, I get eight points here, I get four points here, I get three points there, I get another six points here, that's me. You're entitled to this. Do not give up. Just because the PIP process sucks, you are entitled to this funding. The government want, they do, they want us to be as independent as possible for as long as possible because it saves them money. It's just the process. So just accept they're not going to give you the right points and you have to appeal. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. But please don't give up and don't listen to all this bullshit chat on these really depressing chat groups oh, with the fear mongering. The people that, like I guarantee you, all the people that I've helped and we've won and this future politician, we will win. There is no question in my mind, we're going to win. He is going to win because it's the truth and he's entitled to it. It's really simple. I'll help him communicate it in the right way I'll mentor him for the assessment. I will be on the assessment with him and he'll win. But we're going to have to appeal it. Even with me, with my skill base, we are going to have to appeal it because it's pit. It's just how it works. Yeah, even with my skill base, it doesn't matter how clear you communicate it or I communicate it and it's perfect. They're still not gonna give us the right points because that's how it works. I, I'm sat here and I'm like, why am I going on about this? Like, why am I really harping on about this? And I think it's because with the washing and dressing, practically everyone gets points in this area. And a high number of us avoid getting in the bath and shower because of how much energy it takes and it's high risk and there's so many tasks to do. But people give up and I don't want you to give up. I do not want you to give up. You're entitled to this. Keep fighting.